the sanctuary. Yeah. Praise the Lord! Oh, give thanks unto the Lord! Hallelujah, Jesus! We are going to go to the scripture on this morning coming out of Psalms 91. Amen and amen. And I'm going to stop where the Spirit stopped me. How about that? Amen. amen. I'm going to stop where the Spirit stopped me. How about that? We'll go into prayer. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High yes. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you gotta say something. Oh, yeah. You gotta say something. Yeah. My God, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. Hallelujah. In Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the power and from the noise of the pestilence. Hallelujah. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings. Hallelujah. Shall thou trust. He shall be thy shield and thy buckler. How many need a shield and a buckler? We got that shield on and we got that mask on, but how many know we need a shield? And a buckler. His name is Jesus. Let us go into prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We just thank you, oh God. We thank you for who you are. Hallelujah. You are God Almighty and you're God all by yourself. Father God, we just came back one more time to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. God, you closed us in our right mind. God, what nobody but you, God, we came back to tell you thank you. Lord, we ask you to bless the service on today, Jesus. Save somebody. Set somebody free. Deliver somebody from evil. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, we just thank you for the Holy Ghost on today. Your keeping power on today. Lord, remember the preach word on today. Oh, God, let it come forth with power in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day being in the sanctuary with the few folks that we have. But it only takes two when you said two or three gathered together in your name, Jesus. You will be in the midst. And we thank you for being in the midst of today. We thank you for setting us free on today. We thank you, oh God, for your protection and your provision. Oh God, we ask you to bless the servants. Oh God, they're getting ready to see Oh God, they're getting ready to sing with power and then under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we praise you and we thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Hallelujah. How many came to worship him this morning? How many know that he's deserving of your worship? He's deserving of your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't care how bad your situation is, God is still worthy of the praise. He's still worthy of your worship. He's still worthy of your hallelujah. He deserves every thank you, Jesus, that you can give him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that he is a way maker. Has he made any ways for anybody in here? Hallelujah. He makes rivers in the desert. He makes a way of escape every time. Hallelujah. We thank you all for joining us, Zion Church. We thank you all for joining us live. Hallelujah. I truly count it a privilege to stand before the people of God and to give you the word of God. First of giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. Giving honor to the pastor and the first lady in this house, Pastor Bobby Deary and First Lady Nikita Deary. Giving honor even to the California Apostolic Fellowship, to the chairman of the California Apostolic Fellowship, Bishop Charles Jordan. Hallelujah. We thank God for you, sir. And I thank God for all whom honor is due, every elder and every minister. Hallelujah. How many know that God is a good God? I said, how many truly know that God is a good God? Come on, this is the first time that we've all been congregated in the house. How many truly know that God is a good God? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The reason why I was glad because there was a point I couldn't come into the house. There was a point I couldn't approach the presence of God. But he's allowed me a chance to come into the house and lift up my hands, give God the praise, and give God the worship that is due. You didn't deserve to be up in this house. All the stuff that you did, come on here. All the sins that you committed, all the things that you did in your life, you don't deserve to come up in here with your dirty hands, but the Lord takes you. So you want to give God the praise every time you come into the house. Hallelujah. Then. Go ahead and lift them up by yourself then. I don't care what nobody's doing in the house today. I'm not concerned about your praise. I'm not concerned about your worship because I know what the Lord has brought me through. I know what the Lord has kept me from. I know what the Lord has delivered me from.
The first scripture is going to be found in 2 Chronicles chapter 13, yes. verses 12 through 16. And the second scripture will be found in Psalm chapter 121, verses 1 through 2. You can follow along with me if you'd like, but I'm going to go ahead and read the scriptures in your hearing. Amen. Amen. Once again, that's 2 Chronicles 13, chapter 12 through 16. And it says this, and behold, God himself is with us for our captain and his priests with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them. So they were before Judah and the ambushment was behind them. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind. And they cried unto the Lord, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Verse 15 says, Then the men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. 16 says, And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. I'm going to draw your attention to a very familiar passage in the book of Psalm, chapter number 121. And I'm just going to read two verses for you in your hearing. Once again, that's Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. And it says this, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you because every word that is spoken, it shall not return unto you void, but it shall prosper in the thing whereunto it was sent. Father God, I ask you today that you word the mouth of me, Lord God, that I may be able to expound on the word in such a way that somebody is healed, that somebody is delivered, that somebody is touched, that somebody is set free, that somebody walks out of here returning back to you. Let somebody hear this, Lord God, and be convicted in their hearts and be converted in their souls. And God will forever give you all the praise and glory and honor that is due your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. You can be seated at this time. My topic today, and I want you to repeat it, and you don't have to look at nobody, you don't have to turn to nobody, touch nobody's hands, all right? The topic is surrounded but not trapped. Everyone say that, surrounded but not trapped. Surrounded but not trapped. There's a difference. The subtopic is help is coming. During this pandemic season, many of you have been feeling overwhelmed. This pandemic not only introduced new challenges to your life, but for some of you, it has exacerbated or made worse the problems that you were already dealing with prior to the outbreak of COVID. You were already going through marital issues before COVID, but while being quarantined in the house, you found that your marriage has begun to unravel. Your finances were already a little bit shaky, but with the pay cuts and the reduced hours Jesus. and the furloughs, your bank account is now just about empty. Jesus. Your business was already suffering, but since the outbreak, you've had to make the tough decision to close your doors. Your kids were already testing your patience. But now that you've had to juggle the responsibilities of being a parent, an employee, an IT technician, and a part-time homeschool instructor, your patience has been far spent. Now, as you navigate the terrain of your new normal, as you try to figure out the new way of doing things, as you try to navigate these new changes, the recent adjustments that you've had to make in the last seven months have caused you to feel anxious and stressed, have caused you to feel like you have been surrounded. Surrounded.
surrounded by problems, surrounded by issues, surrounded by circumstances. You were going through one thing and here comes another thing on top of that. You were going through this and here comes that. You've been bombarded, you've been overwhelmed, you've been overtaken with a bunch of problems and issues. But what I've learned in my walk with God, Elder Shelton, is that although change is often uncomfortable, it's always the prerequisite for growth. Did you hear what I said? I said change is always uncomfortable, but it's always the prerequisite for growth. That means whenever you go through uncomfortable change, God is expanding you. God is growing you. God is uh, expanding you into new terrain, into new territory, into new blessings, into new favor, into new opportunities. The shifts that have been taking place in your life are preparing you for your next level. And in our text, we learn that Israel is going through some major changes at this time. King Solomon has just died after reigning in Israel for 40 long years. His wicked son, Rehoboam, assumes the throne as king of Israel. But because Rehoboam refused to adhere to the wise counsel of the elders, he caused a rift a separation, a shift in the kingdom of Israel. Because he didn't listen to the elders, he caused Israel to become divided. How many of you could have avoided some pitfalls in your life had you just listened to godly wisdom and godly counsel? How many times have you fallen into the pit because you refused to listen to your mother? How many times have you fallen into the pit because you refused to listen to your pastor? And now that you've fallen into your pit, you found yourself even deeper, and now you've got to climb even harder and higher to come up out of the pit. But had you just listened to somebody who had already been there before, had you just paid attention to what they said to you, you could have avoided that pitfall. You could have avoided some heartaches if you had just listened to somebody with some wisdom. But even in Rehoboam's stubbornness, and this is what I love about God, uh, Elder Daniel Williams, even in his ignorance, even in his disobedience, God's will still prevailed. God's will still won. God's will still came about. In fact, God later told a prophet by the name of Shemaiah that this split in the kingdom was not the devil's doing. Oh, God. Okay. He said this split in the kingdom was not the enemy. This split in the kingdom is not because of Rehoboam. This split in the kingdom is because of me. It's my doing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I, now, I got a problem with that because I've always learned that God, you know, he increases and, and he adds and he and he multiplies. And yes, he certainly does all of those things, but God also divides. Oh, oh, oh you thought it was the devil that split your marriage. You thought it was the enemy that split up your friendship. You thought it was the devil that split you up from your church. No, 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 honey. That was God all behind the scenes. You may be asking, why would God cause division? God ordains division when, it's a t when what's attached to you is not connected to your destiny. I don't, I, don't, I don't have any witnesses in the house. Did you hear what I said? I said anytime God divides, it's because whatever is connected to you, whatever is attached to you, is no longer serving your destiny. It's no longer serving where you're going. It's no longer serving where God is trying to take you. And so he'll divide you. He'll separate you. He'll cause a rift. He'll cause a shift. He'll cause a split. He'll sever the connection because as long as that thing is still attached to you, as long as that person is still connected to you, you'll never get to the place that God desires to take you. You'll never get to the place that God has ordained for you. You'll never go higher in your destiny. You'll never reach your high calling. You'll never do what God calls you to do. So after Rehoboam, after Rehoboam began to fortify the cities for defense in Judah, the Bible says that he forsook, he forgot the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. How can someone, I, I couldn't understand this, how can someone who was raised up in the admonition of the Lord can turn their back on God? How can someone who knows the law of God reject the law of God? How 
could Rehoboam, who was raised under a godly lineage, end up straying from God? How can Rehoboam, who was raised up under God's law, become a devil? I don't understand that. Well, let me explain it to you. It's because Rehoboam began to rely on his own power and ability rather than the power of God. After he established himself, he decided he didn't need God anymore. Instead of trusting God to be Judah's fortress and shield, he decided to take matters into his own hands. And let me tell you something. When you take matters into your own hands, that's when you become your own God. And when the Lord sees you take matters into your own hands, he'll step back. He'll take his hand off the situation and let you figure it out for yourself. When you decide that your plan is better than God's plan, God will step back and let you enact your own plan to prove to you that you need him, to prove to you that you can't make it on your own, to prove to you that it's in him that you live, it's in him that you move, and it's in him that you have your being. But despite all of Rehoboam's efforts, despite Rehoboam's building and fortifying, the Bible says that Judah was still overtaken by Egypt. All that building he did, all those defenses he put up, all of those buildings he made in the cities of Judah to protect himself from his enemy, the Bible says that Egypt still found a way to get on the inside. He failed to realize that the best military strategy he had was God. He forgot that it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So the Lord allowed Shishak, king of Egypt, to take away the treasures of the house of Israel and the shields of gold. But when Israel humbled themselves, when Israel began to cry out to God, when Israel began to pray, when Israel realized they're wrong, they mean God vowed not to destroy them, but he said, I will grant them some deliverance. Lord have mercy. Did you hear what I just said? He said, I will grant them some deliverance, but they're going to have to go through a little bit of something because they're going to have to suffer the consequences of their actions just because you ask God to forgive you, just because you turn your mind around, just because you come back to the church doesn't mean that you won't suffer the consequences of your actions, that you won't suffer the consequences of your deeds, that you won't have to pay what you did in your life. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad that even when I brought judgment upon myself, God still delivered me. Even when I made the decision to stray away from God's plan, God didn't stray away from his plan for my life. He didn't change his mind about my destiny. He didn't let my foolishness interfere with his plan for my life. And you ought to praise him that he didn't let, let your foolishness interfere with his plan for your life. So Rehoboam dies, and Israel is now under the leadership of his son Abijah. The Bible says that a war broke out between Abijah and Jeroboam, who reigned over the northern kingdom of Israel. Abijah had an army of 400,000 valiant men of war. These men were trained individuals. They knew how to fight and they knew how to win wars. They had the strength, the skill, and the agility of warriors. But Jeroboam, the Bible says, had an army of 800,000 men of valor. Before they even begun fighting, Israel was already at a disadvantage. The conditions were not in their favor. The northern kingdom had more men. They had more horsepower. They had more weapons. They had a better military strategy. But despite all of these things, what Judah had was the word of God. What Judah had was a promise from God. What Judah had was a word from the Lord God of Israel. Now some of you are found in the same position. You feel like the odds have been stacked against you. But when it seems like you've been outnumbered by your enemy and there's no help in sight, God's going to send you some angelic reinforcement. I just said God's going to send you some angelic reinforcement to help you fight the fight. You're not in the fight by yourself. You're not in this alone. You're not struggling by yourself. You're not worried by yourself. You're not stressed by yourself. You've got a helper. You've got a comforter standing right there beside you. He's helping you bear the 
the yoke. He's helping you bear the burden. He's helping you bear the trial. He's helping you bear the problem. He's helping you bear the situation. So Abijah, he stood up on Mount Zimmeram and he began to speak to Jeroboam. And this is what he said. He reminded them of God's promise to David that his kingdom would last forever. He began to remind them of a covenant that God made with Judah. Jeroboam may have had the numbers, but Judah had a word from the Lord God. Jeroboam may have had the manpower, but Judah had a promise from God. And as long as you've got a promise, as long as you've got a word from God, you don't have to worry about your enemy coming to attack you. You don't have to worry about the multitudes coming to attack you because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the Lord will lift up a standard against him. What is that standard? The standard is the word of God. When the enemy comes out on every side to come and get you, to come and bind you, to come and attack you, he'll send the word to block his attacks. He'll send the word to block his tactics. He'll send a word to block his scheme. He'll send a word to block his trap. So you don't have to worry about the arrow that flies by day. You don't have to worry about anything that comes your direction because you've got a God that's on your side. And if God be for you, who can be against you? said to Jeroboam, but as for us, the Lord God is our captain. God himself is with us for our captain. When Jesus is your captain, you'll never be led off course. When Jesus is your captain, your boat will never sink. When Jesus is your captain, your plane will never crash. When Jesus is your captain, you will never lose a battle. When Jesus is your captain, you'll come out victorious every time. When Jesus is your captain, you'll have the victory in every situation. I want everybody in here to praise God right now. Because Jesus is your captain. He's guiding you all the way. He's directing you all the way. He's leading you all the way. He's protecting and providing for you all the way. Abijah, he goes on to tell them, Oh Israel, do not fight against the Lord of your fathers, for you will not prosper. I've got some good news from you out of the word of God. No weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. Your weapon might be formed. You might get hit a few times. But when it hits you, it won't be able to finish the job because it shall not last. I heard an old song one time that says, trouble don't last always. Trouble will come. surrounded. Jeroboam's army was in front of them and behind them. At the same time, there was nowhere for them to hide or escape. It seemed like all hope was lost for Judah. Have you ever felt like you were stuck between a rock and a hard place? You can't go forward. You can't go back. You can't go side to side. And you can't stay where you are. You've ran out of options. I came to encourage you today to tell you that although you are surrounded, you are not trapped. Although the enemy is all around you, you are not trapped. You might have run out of resources, but you are not trapped. You might have run out of time, but you are not trapped. You might have run out of money, but you are not trapped. Your hands and your feet might be tied, but you are not trapped. You still got more options. You still got one more option available, and that option is your mouth. For the Bible says that when Judah cried unto the Lord, and as the men of Judah shouted, God smote Jeroboam and all of Israel. They didn't need horses. They didn't need bows and arrows. They didn't need swords and shields. Their deliverance was in their mouth. Their breakthrough was in their mouth. Their victory was in their mouth. God wanted me to let everybody know in here. You may feel like your life is surrounded with issues and problems, but if you can just open up your mouth. I said, if you can just open up your mouth, God will scatter your enemies. If you can open up your mouth, God will raise up a standard. If you want to open up your mouth, Somebody begin to open up your mouth right now. 
begin to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Begin to open up your mouth and slap faith at Jesus. Begin to open up your mouth and say, Lord, I love you. Begin to open up your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. Begin to open up your mouth and say, Lord, you need to go. Begin to open up your mouth. Don't keep your mouth closed. Don't keep your mouth closed. If you keep your arms closed, just don't keep your mouth closed. If you keep your legs closed, that's alright. Just don't keep your mouth closed. Oh, come on, come on in here. Come on in here. Raise up the voice of worship. Raise up the voice of praise up in here. Why God didn't allow Judah to be overtaken. And that's because one, Judah is the praising and worshiping tribe. For the name Judah means praise. And anytime you invoke the presence of God in praise, he can't help but to free you. Let me ask you a question. What tribe are you from? You from the tribe of Dan? You from the tribe of Naphtali? Are you from the tribe of Dan? How about Asher? How about Joseph? I'll tell you what tribe I'm from. I'm from the tribe of Judah because I'm a praiser and I'm a worshiper. And if you got a relationship with Jesus Christ, guess what? You from the tribe of Judah too. Praise. I'm made out of praise. I was created out of praise. I can't help but praise him. I can't help but worship him. I can't help but lift my hands. I can't help but open up my mouth. Every battle that you get ready to fight, you're going to win them all. Did you hear what I said? You will not lose one battle. You will not lose one fight. You're going to win them all. Get back up at the top. You might not be there, but I'm getting back up. Don't you dare underestimate the power of your mouth. Don't you dare undermine the power of your praise. God responds when you praise the worship. God delivers when you praise the worship. Heal when you pray the work. When Joshua and the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho, he told them, open up your mouth and shout. When Jehovah back and the Israelites got attacked by the Moabites and the Ammonites, Jehovah back sent the brave team out in front of the army. They began to sing praises. And the Bible says, that the Lord sent ambushment in the camp. Oh, that's not good enough for you. What if we go to the New Testament? When Paul and Simon were in the tent, they were locked up, they were tied up, they were bound up. But the Bible said, one of them began to break, one of them began to sing, and the cell door opened. Judah, 
whose kingdom would be established forever. There was a man that was coming down from 42 generations to die for the sins of the world. And that man's name was Jesus. Judah's purpose was to bring forth the Messiah. Judah's purpose was to bring forth Jesus Christ. And I came to tell everybody in here, your purpose is too big for the wrong of I said your purpose is too big for the wrong of You ain't getting ready to go nowhere. You ain't getting ready to die from no disease. The bacteria is not strong enough for the word of God.
because we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you because to know, we know today that you are going to be sending help. You are going to be sending reinforcements on our behalf. Father God, we ask you today that you continue to bless this word. Let it go out and reach as many people as it can. Let them be uplifted. Let them be encouraged. Let them be fortified in their spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Satan, we talk to you and tell you that you have no dominion. You have no authority. You have no power. In the name of Jesus. 